the Internet of Things. Massive amounts of data being generated and rapidly streamed to data stores, waiting for analytics teams. It's all very cool, but how does that work? Why do we want real-time data? Can't we just speed up traditional ETL to make it seem like real-time? Let's go over a couple architectures that answer these questions. The most common real-time data processing architecture is Lambda. It starts with the message layer where stream data is queued for processing, most commonly using Apache Kafka. Then the data is split into either the batch processing layer, which is pretty much identical to a traditional batch ETL. This handles data that comes in via files or other batch processes, or data that can be collected instantly through APIs will pass to the speed layer or streaming layer, which is a real-time processing engine. Both paths will end up in the serving layer, generally a data warehouse, where analytics tools and models can access the data. The advantages of a Lambda architecture come mostly from being able to still use batch processing. It makes for an easier transition to real-time analytics if you can keep already built ETL processes in place and just add in real-time when possible. It speeds up data needed for reporting where necessary, but maintains the reliability of batch processing. It's also easier to add in validation and data cleanup during the batch processing to fix any errors introduced by the stream data. For instance, if a value is entered in real time, then gets manually adjusted at the source, this can be easily corrected during a nightly batch process. The disadvantage is the complexity. It is essentially two data pipelines. Batch tools as well as streaming tools will need to be used, each with their own code bases. Any troubleshooting will need to determine which process the error occurred in and will double the difficulty in tracking down bugs. The last problem can come on the analysis side. If some data appears real time, and some at batch intervals, users building models or reports need to be clear on the timing of data. For instance, if you have sales data streamed directly from your sales system, but a nightly profit and loss report from your accounting system, this needs to be made clear to users or there will be lots of questions why numbers don't match on reports. The next popular architecture is the Kappa approach. It's very similar to Lambda, with a message layer coordinating the incoming data, but there is no batch layer. Everything is passed into the speed layer as it is received. So both data through APIs and data through files or other normal batch methods are passed into the speed layer and treated as real time. And then everything is passed into the serving layer. The goal being to get maximized real time data ingestion. The advantage is of course speed. All data is entered into the serving layer as soon as it's available. If building from scratch, avoiding any batch processes and ensuring all data can be streamed is ideal in the Kappa world. It's a much simpler architecture compared to Lambda, with fewer tools, processing engines, and code required. And users know that the data they can access is the most current view of the organization. The biggest disadvantage is that it's very difficult to achieve a pure Kappa architecture. In most people's reality, we still deal with a lot of batch data. People love using files to transfer data, and we interact with lots of legacy systems that can't stream data. Data in source systems is often volatile, with lots of changes to it, so the amount of work trying to detect changes with data already brought in can negate any advantages to the simplified design. Other scenarios to consider is duplicate events being streamed, cross-referencing with already existing events, and ensuring events that happen in a specific order maintain that order. So how do Lambda and Kappa compare? Obviously, if all sources can stream data via API, Kappa is perfect. If you have a lot of batch processes to deal with, start with Lambda and work towards eliminating batch when possible. If your end use for the data, like reporting or machine learning models, output differently when they don't have access to all the data within a batch window, both models can be difficult. But with Lambda, it may be easier to clearly indicate what data in the serving layer is partial and what includes the full batch load. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, a thumbs up would be really appreciated. Stick around for more data content by subscribing to the channel or clicking a video on screen. See you in the next one.